Hi, I want to show you some new, some of the new stuff in GoZinc 5. Uh, we're really psyched about this because it adds perform script on server to GoZinc. So a whole class of syncs get a lot faster. In particular syncs, we have a lot of records, but you're only syncing a subset of them. Like you have a lot of records on your iPad, but only a few change every time. Those syncs get a lot faster in GoZinc 5. Um, the other thing that's new in GoZinc 5 is we have this new example file that lets you demo checkout. And checkout is one of our favorite workflows with GoZinc. And we've never really had it in the demo before, so we're pretty psyched that uh, you get to demo it now. So let's take a look at what checkout is and in the process kind of see a couple syncs work and see what this demo file does. So this is works hosted. And this is kind of acting as our mothership file. This is the big file back on the server. And you can see we have a bunch of work orders here. Um, seven of them are open. These are records that we might be able to work on. Only two are checked out, and those checked out records are on my iPad. This is Works Mobile. This is a mobile version of the same file, and it's um, running offline and using GoZinc to talk back to this file. So the workflow here is that I take things that are open and I schedule them. Now in a real multi-user solution, I might schedule them for somebody, but in this demo, anything scheduled will eventually get brought down to the iPad. And then once they're done, we check them back in and they can be invoiced. So I've just marked these three records as being scheduled. So let's pull them down onto the iPad and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna click the sync button. We'll connect to the server and then pull down those three records. Ah, pull down all five actually because we have three new ones and then the two that were already checked out. So there they are. And you can see that their status changed in the background here. So now we have no scheduled and we have five records that are being checked out. So let's grab one of these and work on it. So the, the idea here is that anything that I modify, you can see the status of all these is pulled. So if I change any of these records, like I change this to you know, be 89, you can see that now the record is marked modified. So anything that's modified is going to get sent back to the server. But the way the workflow works is that anything I mark done will get checked back in, and the checked in records can be invoiced. So your business rules may be that, hey, when things are checked out, users back at the office can't work on them or at least know not to work on them and not to invoice them. But records that are checked back in, those are the ones we invoice. So that's kind of the workflow we're modeling here, call, calling it check-in. So let's check this back in. So let's say we did some work on this house. We're going to pick some photos. Um, you can obviously take pictures right into the uh, container fields here, but I sometimes like to shoot photos just using the camera app and then pick them from the uh, camera roll because that way I can take a lot of pictures and only pick the best ones here. Then we'll uh, sign this get our uh, customer to sign that and you know sign off on our work and accept it and then we'll mark this one done. Whoop, I need to mark it done on the iPad. Okay. So, let's take a set also and say that we've completed this one too. That one's done. So now we've got two um, records that are marked done and we're going to send those back up to the server. So we should now get five records uh, checked in. So, let's check those back in. And we're going to push those two changes. Great. Some nice instrumentation about what's happening here. And now we can see those five records are checked in. And for synergistic peroxide, we got those photos and the signature, and now they're ready to, to invoice. So that's what checkout looks like. But there are two things kind of happening under the hood that we're really excited about. One is when we clicked sync, we only brought down scheduled records. And in a more advanced solution, we would only bring down my scheduled records. So how do we do that? How do we control what syncs to any one user? So the Gozing philosophy is that while the sync is tricky, uh, the things you modify should be really easy. Um, so there's just a simple script here for you to edit. It's called filter records to pull, and it begins with a default behavior of just working with all records. So if you don't do anything to the script, we're going to bring down all records. We have some testing lines in here that you'll remove so you don't you know, sync 100,000 records while you're testing. But basically, we'll just take all records and then say, hey, what's changed among these records since the last sync? So if that's what you want to do, all you have to do is leave the script alone. But if you want to go further, you can create a branch for each table. And this is the exact sample file that you use, so you can use this branch as your example. And here we're saying, hey, for work orders, let's just perform a find and pull down anything that's scheduled or checked out, anything that's about to come down on the iPad or already there. And you can see how easy it would be to add to this find request and pull down just orders tagged to the logged in user or just orders in my territory. So it's really easy to pull down just a found set of records. The other thing that happened is when I pushed these records back up, anything that was marked done got checked back in. So we had a very similar script that says, in fact, let's take a look at it. It's over in Gozing Mobile. This is another one of your little helper files. This is where you 
download new versions of the mobile app, right? Because you may be fixing bugs and working on this. Goes and can deliver new files as well as uh, move data around. And there's a script within here called custom field mapping where you do things like these, like transform data and hook into the rest of your system. And there's a very simple script here as well. So you could say, hey, when I'm pulling, let's mark our work orders checked out. And then when I'm pushing, let's always mark records we push as updated. But if the record is done, let's mark it as checked in. So these two lines are kind of kind of beautiful. We're in the middle of the sink, and we're saying, hey, if the record I'm working on, record I'm pushing, is marked done, let's do something on the hosted side. Let's mark it as checked in. And the beauty is that all of this happens inside the transaction. There's a lot of documentation on our site about what, uh, what a transaction means. Uh, that's something Todd Geist, our co-author on GoSync, has really pioneered. Todd also uh, put together this beautiful example file, which I, I think is really nice. Um, but the idea of a transaction is that if something happens during the sync, those records edits are rolled back. They're not moved to the server. So if I start marking this record as done and sync it, and something happens, like I lose communication, we're not going to mark that record as checked back in. All those set fields and scripts that you may have added inside the workflow are not going to run as long as they're inside the transaction, which is, is pretty great. And you can kind of see what that looks like over here. This is goes and coasted. This is kind of the hosted controller file. You really use this to wire up the sync and check your work. So you can see here that we have work orders syncing with work order items. And uh, you can use these layouts to kind of check your work. GoSync builds these records based on what you do in, in your uh, relationship graph and scripts. So if you wire things up correctly, you can kind of just read what you've done here, which is really nice. We check your work. But what I wanted to show you here is the sync logs. We maintain the last sync log for each user. You can see the sync we just did. We found two records to push. But this sync had an error. It had a 401 error because I was screwing around with some scripts and, and messed something up. But what I wanted to show you here is that sync was halted and incomplete changes were rolled back. So inside a transaction, if something ever happens to your sync, just because you've marked this done, if that record, something goes wrong with the sync, like you lose communication, we're not going to just go ahead and mark that record as checked in, assuming that you'll catch up with you know, the rest of the data later. Because checked in records get invoiced, and we don't want to invoice an incomplete record. So checkout is a, a great workflow. We check things out, and we check them back in and invoice them. But it requires transactions in order to work, because your users back at the office need to know that when things are checked in, they're real. They're, they're actually done. They've got a real signature, and that that sync was complete. So we're pretty excited about this. It's really nice to be able to demo checkout for the first time and kind of show users how they can get inside the script change the criteria both for what comes down to the iPad and for what happens once records are pushed back up. Um, I hope you'll enjoy this demo file. You can tear into this and use it as part of your own work or just look at how we did little parts of it and uh, like this little switch which I really like and uh, check it out. Thanks.